Well, not since the miners' licence was doubled to three pounds back in 1856 have miners here united in such fierce and implacable opposition to a new tax grab. While it's not quite the Eureka Stock Aid yet, the stakes here are higher this time round with multi-billion dollar investment decisions in the balance and serious questions being asked about sovereign risk. The 40% resource rent tax on profits was just one of three recommendations out of the almost 140 published by the Henry Review that the federal government has decided to adopt with the aim of raising an extra $12 billion of revenue within three years. Resources stocks were immediately hammered, shedding billions of dollars in value as the implications sunk in. I spoke to the biggest player in the global mining game, BHP Billiton Chief Marius Kloppers, about just what those implications are. Well, Marius Kloppers, um, I think you knew that there was going to be a resource rent tax imposed by the government. Everyone else knew it. But there was a real sense of shock and anger this week from you and from the rest of the mining industry. Can you just run us through the sequence of events? I mean, when, when did you start talking to the government about it? And why were you so shocked and angry? Alan, I, I don't know exactly when the engagement process started, but clearly the, um, the Henry tax review started, uh, yeah, I don't know, Couple 18 months, ago. two years ago, before the global financial crisis in any case. Um, but obviously as you engage in, in various ways, you're never quite certain what happens. And I think it's the content and what eventually eventuated that, uh, that made us speak up here. When did you know that there was going to be a, a general resource rent tax in this way? Uh, I think we went into the lock-up with, uh, with your crew. But there, uh, weren't you talking to the Minister, uh, uh, um, to the Government, for some time before last Sunday about how the, what the shape of it could be? Well, we, we spoke with, vi with various people, particularly about our principles, but uh, until last Sunday we, uh, we didn't know what shape it was going to be. We heard the normal things that one hears around town and so on. It was clear to me, certainly uh, personally, that something with a 40% rate was being, uh, was being bandied around. Well, what were the principles? that you mentioned? Uh, our four principles are very simple. Um, keep it stable. This country has had great wealth generated by investment in this sector, principally because it's been a stable environment from a tax perspective. So our first principle was don't go back on investments that have already been made. Second principle was... You mean make it only prospective, not... Make it only prospective. Sec for i.e. for new investments. Second principle was as you think about those prospective things, keep it internationally competitive because we want investment here for the long run. And then our third principle was not all products are born equal. Keep it differentiated between different products because they're all different. And the last one was please don't tax infrastructure because we need more of it to grow our exports. And did you tell the government those four principles before last Sunday? I think I told it to uh, my children, my wife, uh, everybody that wanted to listen to me ad nauseum. Okay, but did you tell the Prime Minister and the Treasurer uh, either yourself directly or through the industry? Them, the, uh, yeah, the opposition right, okay. and everybody else. Okay, so, but then they ignored you, right? Is that, is that what's happened? I think we, we certainly feel that we've, uh, we've not uh, gotten across. Certainly if I look at the proposal that is being made, the, uh, the very important fact that not changing the, uh, the tax regime for uh, investments that have already been made, uh, that point certainly hasn't gotten across, nor has the point on competitivity. By which you're talking about the rate, are you? The, yeah, the... yeah. Basically what is being proposed is that uh, Australian mining companies will pay twice the tax rate of very major uh, mining countries like Canada, uh, Brazil, China and so on that compete for investment. But do you oppose the idea of a resources rent tax or just this one? Um, philosophically, um, we are obviously in the space that people review how they want to tax, how much they want to tax. What, what we have advocated though is that don't break the trust of, uh, on the, or the basis on which past investments have been made and apply those prospectively where you know there is an investment decision to be made and, and somebody can with open eyes walk into that uh, into that regime. So but, but are you opposed to 
resources rent tax in principle? No. I mean, uh, right, because you've been paying res petroleum resources rent tax for almost 30 years. Well, uh, again, we are, we are not opposed to reform. We're not opposed to any particular form of how that taxation takes place. What we are not uh, in favour of is changing the, uh, the tax on investments where uh, there's been a, a different assumption on the, uh, on the uh, tax rate. So do you feel like you're in a negotiation now over the, over the form of this resources rent tax? I mean, you, uh, do you have any uh, thought that you might uh, possibly get it turned around? It won't, it won't be taken away, will it? Yeah, I think the government has indicated that its um, uh, consultation process is aimed at fleshing out the details rather than the principles of the, uh, of the process. What I can say, though, is that um, there will be an impact on investment, jobs and growth if the, uh, if the tax is implemented in an unchanged form. Well, on that subject, you've got a, a, an Olympic Dam expansion or expansion of the Olympic Dam project in South Australia mm. that you're looking at. Uh, what's going to happen to that? Well, we've looked at that. Uh, we acquired that project five years ago. We've been working very hard to develop the technologies to, uh, to do that in a manner that is um, cost-effective, capital-effective, and we've waited for the uranium market to, uh, to show demand. Um, obviously, um, we are getting very close to the end of that process. Our EIS, I think, will finish in about 18 months' time. Uh, and this new tax proposal does um, upset the apple cart there a little bit. Okay, well, how much? I mean, are you saying that Olympic Dam will be shelved? Um, no. I mean, in, in very real terms, we've had five days to study this from last Sunday. Uh, and, and, and one cannot draw a conclusion in five days. What I can say, though, is if you move the tax rate from about 44% to 57% or possibly more, um, that doesn't make it any easier. But other companies are being specific about projects that they're saying, well, we can't go ahead with that now. And um, you've got a number of projects. It's not just Olympic Dam. You've got expansion of the iron ore mines uh, in uh, WA uh, that you're looking at, uh, coal expansion in Queensland, yeah. the Illyri uh, uranium mine. I mean, uh, how do they all look now in the, if, if the tax doesn't change? Well, the uncertainty is uh, in place. Um, it would be very difficult to approve any of those projects. Um, but uh, obviously we're not going to come out, while, particularly while it's very uncertain of exactly what will happen, to make blanket statements about things that affect livelihoods of communities, people, employees and so on. But is there anything due for a final investment decision uh, uh, soon? Not imminently. No, not imminently. And in general, I, I mean, are you more likely to look at Canada or Africa or Latin America for investment now? I think that what one can safely say is that if you pay twice the tax in one country that you pay in another uh, for the same product, then relatively speaking, that other country will become more, uh, more attractive. However, at a baseline, what I hope is that the stable investment regime that we've had here for decades continues and that we can continue to invest here. Uh, after all, last year, for example, all of the cash that we generated from our Australian operations, a small portion went to dividends to Australian shareholders, but all of the rest uh, we invested straight back into, uh, into expansions.